Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Tonight I'm going to show you how to make a battery discharger. When I go flying, my personal practice is that I'll charge up a bunch of batteries, go to the field and fly, and then when I come home, if I have any batteries that are still charged, you guys might remember this strategy, right? Where I leave the little red caps on the battery, and that way when I come home, if that's still got a red cap on it, then I know I should discharge that one right away because it's fully charged. Most chargers can only discharge at a rate of like 0.5 to 1 amp at a time. When we fly, we're flying at 10 to 20 to 30 to 40 amps. So the batteries can take a little bit of discharge rate, but the dischargers aren't generally equipped for it. And the reason they're not equipped for it is because they can't dissipate the heat. So I came up with this idea. And what's funny about this is just the other day I was at the field and there was a guy down at the end with an electric plane. He had a little T28 down there and he was running the motor. And I said, what is he doing down there? And when he came back up to the area where we were sitting and we asked, we said, what are you doing down there? He said, oh, I'm just discharging my batteries. And I kind of snickered about it because it's not a terrible way to go. And I, I said, why, why are you doing it uh, in your airplane? He said, well, because, you know, my discharger only discharges at 0 0.5. <laughs> so I, I just kind of laughed because I had this on my brain for a long time. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to talk a lot in this video while I do the build. I'm just going to do one of those hot cut deals. All right. So I got to go through a couple disclaimers first. Okay. If you're a klutz, stop right now and move on to the next video. But if you can pay attention to what you're doing, then keep listening. This assumes that you have certain basic knowledge of, of voltage management on your LiPos and that you have some spares. I have spares, so I had spares available that I can use for this project. If you don't have spares, you can buy them, and my intention for this was to be cheap, as cheap as I could be, um, because you can buy a discharger for about 75 bucks that'll do, I think it's up to like, I think it's the ISDT, FD 200 and I think that thing does like six to eight amps. So my goal here was to be cheap, cheap, cheap. That's what I'm after. The next thing is I'm not designing it with safety in mind because I'm just doing it for a proof of concept. So if you guys are interested in this, let me show you what I pulled out first so you understand how serious I'm taking this. That's what I pulled out first. I was originally going to start cutting it out of a big piece of pine board. It just so happened when I went over to my saw, I saw this thing standing there and I couldn't believe it. I said, that'll do for the purposes of proof of concept. Okay. So this is a proof of concept. Now, when I use it, I will use one of these to affix it to my table, just like I do with the judge. I'm just going to clamp it to my table. Let's go through what you're going to need for this build. Okay. First thing you're going to need is a load. The idea behind using a motor is that everybody probably has a motor. I've got a box full of them. I've been flying for a long time. I've got a box full. This motor came off a, a broken Spitfire. Remember the Spitfire video? I said, collect all the parts because you never would know what you can use it for. I'm going to use my Spitfire motor for now as a uh, load generator to help discharge batteries. And all I did is I way under propped it because I'm not looking for efficiency here. All I'm looking to do is create load. Okay, that's all I'm looking to do is create some load and, and, and create some amperage. I could care less if it's not efficient. It doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. And it just so happened this one was already mounted to a little plastic firewall. So all I've got to do is screw that onto my stand. So there's my motor. The ESC. Back when I was buying my initial Dynam warplanes, I bought one of these, I got one of these Detrim ESCs and pulled it out of the out of the airplane because it stuttered. I didn't like that. It stuttered. But here's the important part. This is a 40 amp ESC that can support up to 6S. This will support every battery I've got. I've got 3S up to 6S, and this will take care of all of them. And again, I'm not looking to hit 40 amps, all right? I just need like 10. So this is a perfect ESC for this project, and it's just an old ESC I had laying in a box. You need a servo tester, and initially, you might want a watt meter. I'm gonna use a watt meter because I wanna be able to show you what it's doing. Um, over time, you may just decide you don't need one. And then the last thing you need is a little voltage alarm. And this will give you per cell voltage. And I'm going to set this to a high value. The way I'm looking at this project is that when I put the battery on this little rig, I'm going to be taking what, what I consider to be like a rough cut on the voltage, right? So I like to store my batteries at 3.8 volts per cell. 
when I put this together, I'm going to probably set this as high as I can, 3.8, 3.9 volts per cell. And when the alarm goes off, I'm going to turn it off. And then I'll, then I'll bring it over my charger and let my charger finish the job and bring it down in a balanced manner per cell down to my storage voltage of 3.8. Does that make sense? Now, when I do that, it's not going to take very long on my charger, maybe a few minutes, and I'll be right down where I want to be. All right, so that's enough talking. Let me just go ahead and start putting this together. I'll let you watch. I'll do some hot cuts so we can move through it real quick. And then when I'm done, we'll take a look at how, it's come, how it works. Okay, all I did was put a shelf in for my ESC and put a couple of gussets underneath so it doesn't collapse when I push down or move the ESC around. That's all I did. Okay, this is my test battery that I charged up for this test. Here's 3.8. And we're ready to test. Okay, now I've got my clamp. I'm just going to clamp that down to my table. Give it a couple squeezes. And I'm going to run mine so that the wind blows toward me and that's another benefit it is summertime it's hot outside if you're working in your garage you can use this as a fan why not all right let's plug it in and see what happens okay that's blow so i'm just going to change these two there we go all right now one last little thing just to give you guys an eyeball as to what's happening. Okay, there we go. There's my little miniature battery discharger. Probably took me, what, 15, 20 minutes just to slap this together. So here's what I'm gonna do. I've got my little table clamp. I'm just gonna clamp this down to my table so it doesn't move on me. And I've got it set up to blow air toward me and that'll help do a couple things. I've got my battery here, I've got my ESC here, and it'll blow air over those devices while I'm doing the discharge. So it'll help cool and you can use it as a fan in the summertime. What the heck, why not? This is my alarm. So I can walk away while this is running as long as it's secure and this alarm will go off when I hit 3.8 volts per cell, which is fine. I'm going to keep the amp draw relatively minimum. When it hits 3.8, I'm going to shut it off, and then I'll put it on my charger and let the charger finish the job balancing it down so that every cell is equal. Remember, this is a rough cut of voltage, right? Just a, it's a rough cut. And I'll do the fine cut on the charger, which can only discharge at a certain rate. I've got my servo control down here connected to the ESC on the signal side, and I've got my ESC. So now I'm just going to turn it on, and I'm going to take a look and see what kind of... I'm going to look and see what kind of amperage I can get.
And there you go. That was exactly the outcome I expected. ESC is not warm. The motor is not warm because we were blowing the air directly over it. The battery is not warm. So this served as a cooling device and a discharger. When I started, that was close to 4.2. I don't think it had peaked yet on my charger, but it was close. And I just took that down to a 3.8. Now this battery, the reason I'm using this is because it's a test battery. This battery shot. So that's why, I'm my, that's why my voltage is out. And by the way, these things, you have to find accurate ones of these two. These aren't perfectly accurate, but it's, it's close. So again, you can use this as an alarm to say, okay, it's cheap. Now, like this costs a dollar on Amazon. You can use this as an early warning alarm to say, hey, it's time to turn off your discharger. And I just took that battery down from 4.2 to 3.8 on, on at least one cell. Now I can take that pack and put it over on my discharger. And then once you get comfortable with it and you've done your own testing, you could use a lower number. You could use 3.7 on that because after it unloads, it's going to come back up a little bit. So, you know, you have to toy with it. But there you go. That's the idea. That's, that's just a cheap, real fast, down and dirty battery discharger I made from spare parts in 30 minutes. And now I can use that if I, especially if I have a big battery, if I've got a 4,000 or a 5,000, you know, if I've got a big battery that needs to be drained, I don't have to create all that heat and wear and tear on my nice chargers over there. I could just put it on this thing and run it down. No big deal. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please consider subscribing. And if you are a subscriber, don't forget to tell your friends, keep talking, sharing, commenting, thumbs up, thumbs down, all that stuff helps out. I appreciate it. And uh, there you go. There's my down and dirty battery discharger. Cheap. Take it easy. Most chargers can only dischamp. Oh, I'm just discharging my batteries. <laughs> I've got 3S all to 6S. So I've got three. I can just put it on this thing and run that, run that, run that. Ugh. <laughs>